<laughs> All right. Okay. So this is Chelsea again. And this is going to be about friends. The story of this one is The Haunted Manor by Fuzzy Door. All right. The Haunted Manor. Chandler looked up at the girls. Wait, who am I? You, who, uh, you be Phoebe. I'll be Phoebe, okay. Chandler looked up as the girls entered the apartment, a scowl marking his face. Up against his ear was none other than the, the cordless phone, a loud, reedy voice carrying across the voice. As he listened to her, blue eyes wary, face bitter. Monica approached her fiancé with a concerned expression, lips sealed shut as he finally opened his mouth to speak. What does he sound like? Really, Mom? <laughs> really, Mom? I just don't think this is a very good idea. Plus, I don't have the money. I've got a weeding in six months, remember? <laughs> Monica strained to hear Nora Bing's voice over the phone. Her blue eyes meeting with Chandler's. Monica knew all too well that the last thing Chandler wanted to do was spend more time with his mom. She wished he had had a better childhood, but with the parents he was blessed with, it wasn't much of a surprise that he didn't. He being his mom. Chandler, I'm begging you. You're the last person I know that hasn't broken the long, that hasn't booked the long weekend. And plus, I'm your mother. Don't I deserve a little break now and then? Chandler rolled his eyes, voice just as bitter as his face looked. Mom, you just bought a mansion across the Atlantic Ocean. I don't think you need a break from the exhausting life you're living. Well, you know what? She added brightly, her voice still trying to persuade him. You could always bring your friends. How many are there? Five, six of you? And your money's not a problem, Chandler. You're my son, and if you're so kind to help me with this, paying your way could be my perfect way of saying thanks. Come on, kid. You're really saying it's too, um, saying no to a long weekend in Wales? Wales? Like, in England? Phoebe screeched from across the apartment, her own hazel eyes sparkling. Oh, Chandler! Let's go! I I was Let's Phoebe. go! What are you waiting for? And Chandler winced and could slip his hand over the mouthpiece of the phone in order to address his excited friend. He rolled his eyes, muttering, Yeah! My mom bought some ancient manor over in England last week. She says she's only got this weekend to move in all her shit, but she's been planning on giving on a book signing instead. I guess her son is the last resort to have help her. He sounded so bitter, and Monica leaned forward to brush her fingers against his cheek, offering him a quick kiss before he turned his attention back to Phoebe. Well, I would love to go, Phoebe admitted, her hopeful smile never fading. I never got to go to London, remember? Just then, the door to the apartment 20 opened and in showed Joey Tribbiani and Ross Jeller. Joey's ears perked up at the sound of Phoebe's voice, his own dark eyes glittering as he glanced around the room in excitement. You'd love to go where? And we're taking a Phoebe and Joey can't have the same voice. Let's make Joey, like, pop. What's Joey's voice like? You're going where? Are we taking another trip? <laughs> Phoebe grinned back at him, jumping up as he approached her. Oh, I lost my place. You're Phoebe. Yeah, Wales in England. Chandler's mom bought us a fancy house there. She wants us to help her move in. Joey gasped and excitement, brown eyes landing on Chandler. Can we go? Dude, I'm so down. I wanna. <laughs> uh, who the fuck is Nora being? Oh, that's his mom. Chandler, Chandler. And any excited chit-chat fell back to silence as Nora being screeched over the phone, weakly attempting to gain her son's attention. As soon as the room lay stock still, she continued, her voice dripping with happiness. Seems like your friends are all for it, Chandler. So what do you say? 
Will you help move in? All eyes were on Chandler. Chandler Bing for just a few moments before he heaved a sigh and nodded his head. You're fine. We'll go. Let me know when you've got our flight tickets down. The small living room erupted in cheers as all six friends glowed at one another. Their trip might have been on the spot and hardly planned at all, but all were still excited to escape the buzzing city of New York. As much as they loved it, they also loved spending time together, even if it were away from the beloved city. Chandler couldn't help but smile as he watched all five of his friends back up hot, scattering about in order to bag up all the things. At first, he'd been reluctant to accept his mother's request. Of course, he did love staying home in New York, and it was true with his pending wedding with Monica that he didn't have any extra money left to spend. What if his mother really needed his help this weekend and was willing to go to these extremes for him to get there? The least he figured he could do was accept. After all, he would have his friends there. They would undoubtedly have a good time. Hey, sweetie. Wake up, babe. Chandler forced his eyes to crack open. The dim of the evening met meeting his wary eyes. After hours of flying, he was now experiencing severe jet lag, and for the last hour and a half, he'd been sleeping in the car right up against Monica, forehead pressed against the window. Now he lay in her arms, her own blue eyes gazing back into his. What's with this writer and art color vibes? Okay. Morning, handsome, she whispered softly, pressing soft kisses against his lips. Nora Bing had surprisingly met the six friends at the English airport, her entire attire screaming that was, in fact, an erotic novelist. Just like me. Yep. Well, the others did their best to keep polite even with the promiscuous woman, they all knew that deep down she had really scarred Chandler with her overpowering sexual nature. Monica felt the worst for her pussy husband and hated seeing a look in his eyes when he had to force himself to look away from her. Chandler wished he could respect his mother, but Monica knew he just couldn't, because he's a pussy. I, mean, I, I just remembered how much I hated him. It's all coming back to me. Oh my god. God, this is long as fucking balls. He smiled weakly at her before pulling open the door. Nora climbed out of the driver's seat. She turned around to face her son, but still this happened in her tracks. Monica, who Nora found to be absolutely stunning, by the way, was pressing her son gently up against the car door. Fingers raking through his standing hair with love, burning her blue eyes. When she leaned forward to gently graze his lips with her own, and when she watched Chandler pull away with a sincere smile, she felt a sudden burst of happiness swell her heart. She knew very well that she wasn't the world's best mother. She knew that she would never come close to anything of the sorts, but at least seeing some woman make her son happy, just seeing him have a smile on her face and love in his eyes, let Nora know that his life had no been completely lost in retrospect to her own actions. Chandler pulled away from Monica, his eyes still speaking of love and devotion, before he finally turned to face his mother. The seven were standing outside of a pair of the enormous ancient gates. The iron creaking on the south breeze, rain clouds gathered above, tiny droplets beginning to fall from the skies. They all stood together, all too speak just to speak! The man behind these gates wasn't just a house, no, this place was but as a mansion, a huge wooden porch wrapped around the entire base, old patio furniture littered about the front. The door was a huge itself, a brass lion knocker netted at the front. Instead of a modern doorbell, a brick chimney sprouted from the tin roof, and Chandler felt his breath being taken away as he gazed up at it. The house itself must have been at least five stories high, though Nora had mentioned it only had two floors and a cellar. Nora smiled at him, her eyes still resting on Monica before she slowly handed over the keys to unlock the gate, swaying in the blowing wind. She glanced up at the darkening sky, storm clouds rolling in faster than she'd ever expected them to. Well, we should take a look at this place, shouldn't we? <laughs> Where the fuck are you? Let's, let's, just skip, let's just skip two of them. Let's just skip two paragraphs. Fuck it. Oh, right here. Well, that was Ross. Ross isn't speaking yet. What's Ross's voice sound like? Well, we should take a look at these, shouldn't we, boy? Yup. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm gonna go rape my daughter. <laughs> Ross ejected. Are you gonna read it? You take it, turn. I'm done rapping. <laughs> Ross suggested from behind Chandler, brown eyes scanning along the cobblestone pathway leading up to the front door. Chandler threw him a threw him a look over his shoulder, but instead 
the rusted key in the padlock, chaining down the gates after a few moments of scrappling metal against metal gates finally fell open, the wind blowing furiously as rain began to fall in sheets from the gloomy sky. Rachel screeched as her curly locks were instantly drenched in the rainwater, <laughs> mascara running as she um, bolted into the door. The other five followed, I don't know, melodramatically? Melodramatically. It Melo- was like theatrically. Oh, okay. Um, each soaked with English rain. <laughs> English rain. <laughs> before they could even turn um, the second log to get inside. Despite the fact that he heartily wanted to be there in the first place, Chandler could not help but admit, as soon as he stepped... Hey, I can't see. As soon as he stepped inside his mother's new home, he knew exactly why she bought it. All six of the friends now stood in the grand hall, the forest polished stone and enormous white gold um, sh- chandelier swaying back and forth 20 feet above. Rubies glittered all above the room. Um, the glass and windows stained with couleur. Hey, hold Huge. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where are you? Huge, full-length portraits of dozens of different people, all appearing to be extremely wealthy, were printed in their gigantic walls. Candles were soon above the entrance, all burning, all lit. Um, and the fireplace was, too, the flickering flames barely seen in the next room. Chandler shrugged, his blue eyes bored. I don't know. I wasn't really listening to her. She said something about nine but I'm pretty sure there's a few bedrooms down the cellar, except I don't think we'll be going down there. Why? Um, Joy recoiled, but face hurt. <laughs> hey, I let loose, especially in England. Just ask Chandler about that bridesmaid back in London. He winked through the darkness over at his best friend. Hopefully he doesn't fuck him. I had a 12-minute makeout session. Whole bucket of strawberries gone in a flash. Baby grinned, ice sparkling. So you'll play? Yeah, I'll play. He grinned, glancing around the circle. Is everybody else down? The girls all nodded their agreement while Chandler and Ross both shrugged. Neither could say they really wanted to take part in the child's game. What game? I don't know. But Phoebe was right. Phoebe. Phoebe was right. Phoebe is always right. After all, they were spending a weekend in England. Uh, I'm done. Okay, hold on. Let's just do... Okay, there, there. It, it's done. He muttered, wiping his mouth with the dark sleeve of his sweater. Now, come on. Let's forget about that. His dark eyes settled to Monica. A slow smile creeping across his face. Mon! Er, day, tooth, or dare. Oh, my God. Yeah, Phoebes. He chuckled at blue eyes. <laughs> Blue gaze of landing upon Monica upon the beginning of his life to be nothing but love. Weird. I like how there's like a little like thing at the end. This is supposed to be more scary, but I got bored. Who <laughs> oh, just okay. made you read three pages of shit and then over? Seriously. Alright. What are you doing? How do you get back to the movie? No. Whoops. Uh, hold on. Well, Pause it. Close you. No, they're gonna fucking watch. The none of them that watch are gonna watch me fucking do this, and 